In the Code Deploy Service Console, over on the navigation pane, click on Applications, and then go ahead and select the Sample App application, and then click the Deploy Application button. Now under the Deployment group, select Sample App-ASG. This is the deployment group we just created. And then let's scroll down until we see Revision Type. Under the Revision Type, it gives us only two options. My application is stored in S3, and my application is stored in GitHub. Notice that code commit is not an option here. It is possible to use code deploy to deploy from a code commit repo, but not directly. In the next clip, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We just cannot do it here. Now I've already got the sample application files zipped up and stored in an S3 bucket. So in the revision location, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the URL of that zip file right here. Now note, that you must use the S3 URI to specify the object. It has to start with S3 colon slash slash followed by the bucket name and then the object name. This is a zip file. So under revision file type, we're gonna leave that set to zip. And then let's scroll down all the way to the bottom and click create deployment. Code deploy immediately begins deploying the application to the instances. Each deployment has a unique deployment ID, which in this case ends in VFY. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this here. If I scroll to the bottom where it shows development lifecycle events, we can see that it's attempting to deploy to both instances in the auto scaling group. This is gonna take about three minutes to complete. So while we're waiting, click on the view events for the first instance here. And then let's scroll all the way down to the bottom here and you can see the lifecycle events. This is really nice because if the deployment fails, Code Deploy will tell you exactly which lifecycle event failed. So if the failure is due to a script that runs during a particular lifecycle hook, this makes it a lot easier to track down. Now again, the deployment is going to take about three minutes to complete, so I'll give it a bit of time and then refresh the page. Now that the deployment is complete, I should be able to browse to the load balancer URL and get presented with a web page. Let's open up a new tab and then I'm going to paste in the URL of the load balancer and presto, here's the web page. Recall that I said that the change underscore index script that gets executed during the after install lifecycle event modifies the index.html file to include the deployment ID. Here it shows us the deployment ID, which matches what we just saw in the service console. All right, this is all well and good but there is still room for improvement. Next, let's take a look at how we can automate the deployment process to make it faster and easier.